morning, everyone. Welcome to church today. Why don't you stand? If you're joining us online as well, welcome to church. We've got some great worship songs today. So let's join in together as we worship our great God.
eyes of Christ I am alive Because of Christ I am alive Oh, we praise you, Lord We lean in Ooh. We lean into your love and mercy Jewels. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Let's sing, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Yes, we will. Will you lift your hands with us? I will exalt you. Yes, we will. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God, my hiding place, my heart.
voices, my hiding. My hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are my friend. mum to three kiddos who are now teens and a tween. And I was, I was reminded this week as I was preparing, I was thinking when they were in kinder and I would come and pick them up from their kinder session, I would instantly become the pack horse. I don't know if you can relate to that. If you've had little ones who relate to that. They come out of their session and they hand you the bag, the drink bottle, the hat, the discarded jumper, the craft from the day that could come in in any shape or size, the notice, the fundraising, fundraising notice, the excursion notice, all the things and you're instantly loaded up. And it always takes longer to get to the car and you chat to people along the way. And you get to the car and then you eventually, you've been holding all of these things and it's awkward, and it's heavy and it's uncomfortable. And you finally put it all down at the car and you just go, oh, it's holding so much, so many burdens. And I wonder this morning, in the spiritual, if you've come in holding all sorts of ill-fitting, heavy, awkward, difficult burdens in your life. And honestly, you've, you've probably gotten quite good at holding them. You just kind of got, you've gotten used to it. And just want to sing that refrain again about laying our burdens down, but just... Would you take a moment, maybe this is the only moment you've had in your week to actually think about this, but would you bring these burdens before the Lord now? Would you put them at the feet of Jesus who can carry them so much better than we can? He's saying, you don't need to carry that. My yoke is easy, my burden is light, and yet we cling to all these burdens that we carry. So as the worship team sings over us again, Lay these burdens down, lay these things down that you were never designed to carry. That Jesus is saying, I'm here, would you give them over to me? Can we do that right now, church? Thank you.
for what you've done for us. Thank you for taking on the burden of sin on our behalf. Thank you, Lord, for making a way. Amen. We're going to come into a time of communion now. Our hosts will come and distribute the, the elements, and I just wanted to read read a scripture from Hebrews, Hebrews 4. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weakness, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. And as we come into this time of communion and we take, we take the bread and we take the juice, let's remember that we worship a God who isn't far off or removed. He's the God who came close. He understands our weaknesses. He clothed himself in humanity to identify with us. He understands what it's like to live in a world of struggle, trials and temptations, and yet he did not sin. It's such great news, church. Jesus came to be that perfect sacrifice for us. So as you take, as you take your bread and the, and the juice, would you just thank him for that? Thank him that he is a close God. He's not far removed from us. He understands. He made a way to the Father. Just in your own time, would you take the bread and the juice? of what Jesus did for us, we get to live into that, that verse, verse 16. Let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we'll find grace to help us when we need it most. Isn't that good news, church, that we get to come boldly before God because of the sacrifice of Jesus. He made a way so that we could be reconnected to the Father. It's really good news. Would you thank him? Would you thank him for what he's done? Would you thank him for making a way in your own life? Would you ask him to make a way in your own life if you've not done that before? Jesus, we remain forever grateful, forever thankful. Thank you that you are not the far off God, but you came close. That it was through your death and your resurrection that we could be connected to Father God again. We love you, we thank you. We thank you for the grace that is available to us time and time again, even when we stumble, even when we fall, your grace. Your grace is so amazing. We thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Would you take your seats? Good morning to you. My name is Beck. If I haven't met you, I get the great privilege of serving on our um, fantastic staff here at Discovery. And it's so great to have you both here in the room. And if you are joining us online, a really, really warm welcome to you. In a moment, a QR code will be coming up behind me. And I just really encourage you to pull out your phones, take a look, because through that QR code, you'll be able to access lots of tools and resources in our church. We've got 
the prayer requests and praise reports that you can access. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to stand in prayer with you. And we'd love to also hear when God uh, comes through in amazing ways and you've got a, a testimony of his goodness in your life. We'd love to hear that too. In there, you've got information that will help you get connected. Um, everything online that you will need to know, you can register for things. We've also got our information booth out in the foyer that you can uh, get to after the service if you're here on site. We've also got our sermon notes that you can download, um, a great way to follow along and be able to reference back throughout the week uh, what's been talked about here on, on a Sunday. And you'll also find all the various ways that you can give in the life of our church. And again, if you're here in the room, we've got giving stations if you want to use those at the end of the service. I'm going to pray for our giving, but before we do, I just uh, want to throw to the screens and we're going to have Discovery Live. Ladies, we're so excited to invite you to our next Nourish event, which is happening on the 1st of May at 7 o'clock here at Discovery Church. We're super excited, aren't we, Jodie? We are. It's always so much fun when the girls get together. So grab your invitation in the foyer today. You'll find a special bracelet. You'll need that on the night. Come and have a lot of fun with us. If you're 16 or 116, you're invited. We can't wait to celebrate with you. Everyone is searching for answers to life's big questions. Is there more to life than this? Why am I here? Who is Jesus? At Alpha, you can ask anything around the table with people just like you who have questions about life, faith and meaning. There's a seat for you at the table. Find your nearest Alpha today. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Just before I invite um, Zeke up to come and preach this morning, I am not the preacher for this morning, just <laughs> FYI. I just wanted to really quickly uh, as I, before we pray for our offering, this week in our staff teams, we were taking a look at some of the stats uh, that, we, that we track through the life of our church. And I just, I really wanted to encourage, I uh, wanted to share one that was super encouraging to me, that 49% of our, uh, our database, essentially our reach in our church is under the age of 18. It's a pretty significant stat. And sure, I'm sure a stat that not too many churches get to enjoy like we get to enjoy. And so as we have prepared ourselves for our giving and our offering, I just really wanted to just encourage you that the giving that you do goes into investing into these generations. We're a generational church and I, get, I reap the benefit 
I've got my kids here, many of you do too. But even if you don't have kids in that age range, or even if you don't have contact with people in that age range, the giving that you do week in, week out, that allows us to release the ministry to that beautiful age group of kids, that 49% of our church that get to hear the gospel, that get to have our team partner in discipleship with you as parents. And so I just really wanted to encourage you to not allow your giving to just become a week in, week out, th- week out thing. It's, it's, a, it's a form of worship. It's just as important as standing and singing and praising. Our, our worship is our, in our financial giving as well. And so I just wanted to give you that really encouraging stat to remind you of the part of the reason why we, why we give and why we ask you to partner with us because of the things that we're able to do. So let me just pray for our giving and then I will hand over to Zeke. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that we get to be part of such an incredible church, Lord, a multi-generational church. Lord, we get to invest in the lives of our young people and bring them up in your knowledge and bring them up knowing the Bible and, and loving you and being committed to you. And so in all of our giving, Lord, we just hand it over to you again, reminding ourselves that it's just not a task, it's not a duty, Lord, but it is worship to you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've provided to us and we give back to you from what you've provided to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, would you welcome Zeke? He's got a great message this morning, a really accessible message, no matter where you find yourself on the journey. So thanks, Zeke. Thank you, Beck. How are we all going this morning? Can we give it up for our junior youth who are in the room this morning with us? Come on, let's give them a clap, make them feel welcome. Can we just look at them? Look, they've all got their notes out. How awesome is that to have a generation that want to take notes, want to write down, want to hear what God will be speaking to them and just thankful for Tim and Tiani who lead our team, say our youth so beautifully. Can we give it up for Tim and Tiani? Awesome. Well, we're going to continue in our Honest to God prayer series. And if I was going to be honest with you about my experience in prayer, I grew up in you know, a church environment most of my life. And to be honest, most of my experiences in prayer growing up were, were a little bit awkward and weird, if I was to be really honest. So one of my first and early memories is, you know, sort of being in church and sort of, I used to sit in the service as a young kid, but I, not in this church, luckily, but at the church I grew up in, there was a couple of preachers who just sort of had the same tone. It was really soothing. It was a beautiful voice. I just sort of would like start nodding off a little bit as a kid. And I I remember at the end of the prayer, they would sort of like start, at the end of the sermon, sorry, they would start their prayer and it would be a very loud, booming voice that says, Dear Lord Jesus. And I was like, oh, okay, it's time to wake up. Okay, the service is coming to a conclusion. I also saw this thing online and it was sort of like these people who have really long prayers. Who's, does anyone know someone who does some really long prayers? And you sort of like, bouncing around and just sort of waiting for it to finish. I heard someone call it a, a person who, it's called a thesaurus prayer, who says the same thing in a lot of different ways. So Lord, guide us, lead us, direct us, comfort us, protect us, look over us, guard us with your wings, you know, like then they just, it's like, well, can you just wrap it up, conclude it, finish it? Because I wanna go home and I wanna get some chips, okay? One of the most awkward moments, we did this a lot in youth ministry and I think it was sort of like a way to try and, you know, get us engaged, but there's this thing called popcorn prayer. And some people love it. I found it so uncomfortable. The, the popcorn in its nature just, you know, there's no structure, there's no guide, just whoever wants to pray at any time is good. But often what did happen in a youth environment, there's just a lot of awkward silence. There wasn't much popcorning happening in the prayers. And I had all these experiences of prayer and, and, and oftentimes in the church, we you know, have lots of different experiences and things that shape often, sometimes funny, sometimes awkward, sometimes weird, and that's okay. But we come to this time and we talk about prayer and we go like, well, I actually don't know what that is. Like, how do I do that? Like, 
Is it long winded, big prayers? Is it just like spontaneous prayers? Do I need to make my prayers sound nice? Do I need to, you know, like, like how am I meant to pray? We all find ourselves in this and even myself. And, and, and it's not too dissimilar from the disciples. You know, they walked alongside Jesus. Jesus did ministry and they got to watch amazing things happen. And just like us, they go to Jesus and they ask Him, how should we pray? How should we pray? And it's the question that a lot of people ask because sometimes it just seems like this talking into the void, not really knowing what to say. So we just sort of make it up and hope that what we say is gonna please God when actually I don't think that's the point of prayer, but I love how the disciples ask this question. They say, what must, how can we pray? It's a posture of a learner. It's a posture of a disciple. And I love this prayer that we get to come and look at the Word and we go, how should we pray? So this morning, I wanna unpack this, the Lord's Prayer, which I wanna more, it's, the, it's named titled the Lord's Prayer, probably the better title for it is the Disciples' Prayer because it's Jesus teaching His disciples how they are to pray. And so let's look at this. It's in Matthew 6, verse nine, and Jesus says, pray then like this. Oops, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now the trans translations go on to say, and yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. It's a beautiful prayer. It's an absolutely beautiful prayer. And I think there's some key things that we can learn, real practical message this morning that we can learn from this prayer. But I wanna just firstly point out, sometimes we go, oh, well, Jesus said pray like this. And then we just go, let's just repeat what He said. Notice He didn't say, this is exactly how you are to pray. He says, pray then like this. And so Jesus is actually trying to model a pattern, a, a, a way, some practical ways that you can pray that is gonna help you as a disciple of Jesus. And I wanna just simply go through five key things, five keys to a disciple's prayer. And are we all disciples in the room this morning? And if you're not a disciple, take notes anyway, because I believe God's gonna impact you and speak to you and you're gonna one day be a disciple as well. So five keys to a disciple's prayer. And we're gonna break it down part by part and let's unpack it and let's go through the Word together. The first key to a disciple's prayer is to recognise and to know. Starting section here says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. How you start a prayer is important. How you recognise God and how you speak to Him and how you refer to Him is important. Because what's, in, what's, what's the point in praying if we don't you know, see Him for who He is, if we don't recognise Him for who He is, if we don't know Him for who He is? And what we need to first understand is that word, our. We are a part of a family. We come together, but He is our Father. Father. You see, in the Old Testament, God was described as this far off, separate, far away God, this transcendent, almighty, powerful being that no way we can know. And Jesus comes onto the, into the scene and He's talking to His disciples and teaching Him about God and, and what He says. They say, how then should we pray? How should we recognise Him? And I would almost assume that most of us would think that God wants to be recognised as Creator, as Almighty, as all-powerful, as omnipresent, as omnipotent, all the big words that we know God to be. But Jesus says, how do I want you to recognise me? How do I want you to know me? It is as a Father, someone in a place of, um, in, of intimacy, as a Father. And I know some people in this room struggle with that concept. And I don't wanna like just gloss over that this morning. I know some people's fathers have maybe failed them, let them down. And maybe you have experienced fathers that are separate, that are far off, that are not close, that are not intimate and intimately engaged with your life. But I wanna know that God is your Father, Heavenly Father, Good Father. He's your Father. 
And He wants to know you in an intimate and personal way. And sometimes we do this because, because we think God is like this um, all-powerful thing. And, and I wanna just also say that He's not that. But I think we have this thing where we go to both ends of the spectrum. So notice it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hello meaning holy, meaning consistent, meaning all-powerful, almighty. And sometimes we live on this spectrum of we live in the extremes. So either God is this separate, all-powerful, almighty, all-knowing, we live in this space where we feel like God doesn't wanna be in, interested in our lives, that He's like this too powerful or I'm too sinful or I'm too bad. He can't talk to me because I'm just like so far off. But we need to not be in this either both ways. He's also our Father, but He's also holy. He's consistent. He's powerful. And we need to hold those two together, not separate. Because if we live on the, the, the Father side and no, no, no hallowed side, then we have this intimate God who's just here to fulfil our needs. But if we just live on the, on the holy and the hallowed side, then we have this God who's not interested in our lives and He's just this, this big lawmaker who's trying to make us do what we want. We need to hold them in tension. He is intimate and He's transcendent. He is personal, but He is also vast in nature. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You have to recognise and to know who you're praying to. Is the first point. Part, second key of a disciple's prayer is God's will is greater than your will. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And here's the challenge about the prayer life of a disciple. When we enter into a discipling relationship with Jesus, our prayers no longer can be filled with our wants and our desires. And it's a challenge because I recognised in my life growing up, a lot of my prayer was just about what I want, what I desire, the things that I think that I need, right? So I'm going into prayers, loading them up with my will, what I want, what I desire, what are all these things when really when a life, a, a, a disciple's prayer is actually not so much concerned about self, but it's concerned about the world around us. I wanna ask you these questions. How much of your life, life, prayer life is consumed with the things of God? When was the last time you prayed for that person in your life who doesn't know Jesus to come and know Him? When was the last time you prayed for that family member who doesn't know Jesus? We've all got family members who don't know Jesus. When was the last time you prayed for them? How about this? When was the last time you prayed for Mount Evelyn, for this city, for this region to come to know Jesus? When was the last time you prayed for our political leaders, no matter what party they're a part of? When was the last time you prayed for those people in our community, in, in, in Mount Evelyn and beyond, in our nation? And when was the last time you prayed for them? Because our prayers are to be shaped, your will, not my will. Your kingdom, not my kingdom. Because here's the thing, he says, your kingdom come. God's kingdom is coming. And here's the hard thing, here on earth, it is coming. And here's the harsh truth. Not everyone's in that kingdom right now. And when we pray to God just about what we want, what we desire, when His kingdom is coming and there's people who still don't know Him. Now we've got so many Christians and, and, and it's, I think it's really easy to lean into. It's like, well, when's God coming? When's, his, when's He returning? I'm trying to read the signs it's all good. And we live in this like world where, you know, and people always ask me, sometimes as a pastor, they go, when do you think God's returning? And you know what my response is every time? I think He's coming tomorrow. I think He's coming tomorrow. Do you know why? Because we had to live with an urgency. You know, every generation thinks they're in the last days. They are. 
because His kingdom is coming. And we are to live with an urgency, with an expectation, with a posture, with a prayer that says that His kingdom is coming. And so time is limited. And so we need to tell the story of Jesus so that people can be found in it because His kingdom is coming. And not everyone is in that kingdom yet. There's people in Mount Evelyn. There's people in our region. There's people in Victoria. There's people in our political leaders that need Jesus. And we keep praying for all these things in the world, all the problems, all the challenges, all the chaos, all the war that is going on in our world. And you wanna know the solution to those problems. It's His kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. And we need to be disciples who are keen to see the kingdom of God come in our worlds. And our prayers should shape that. Our prayers should be shaped by God's will being greater than our will. So we've got to recognise and know Him. We've got to know that God's will is greater than our will. And part three, our third key is come daily for daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. This is the one part of the prayer that speaks about ourselves, our needs. And load and loaded into this one line, notice he says, give us this day our daily bread, which assumes that he wants us to pray daily. Every day. I love how Jesus speaks. He doesn't, he doesn't command us to pray daily, but he just assumes that a disciple prays daily. Give us this day our daily bread. Pray for the needs of today. How much of our prayer lives are shaped about praying for the future or praying about the things that have passed? Sometimes we are so concerned about the needs of tomorrow or the things of the past. And I I think I know why because the Lord's looked after our needs today already. Everyone in this room is a testimony to God giving you your daily bread right here, right now. And really is every single day up until this day, He has provided daily. And I, want, I wonder if this is a posture shifting thing that don't worry about tomorrow. Scripture says, don't worry about tomorrow. The Lord's got that in His hands because we can sometimes just get so anxious and, and, and so scared of what is happening tomorrow when we're living in God's provision today. Or here we have people who are praying about things that have gone by, things that from the past, things that they don't think that God has forgotten. And God's saying, don't worry about the past. I pay for that on the cross. Don't worry about the future because I've got that in my hands. All I need you to do is worry about today. Worry about today's bread. I will worry about the future. Come daily for daily bread. You want, you want to know what God wants you to think upon, reflect upon, ask for? It's today's need. What do you need today? What grace do you need today? What patience do you need today? What guidance do you need today? What discernment do you need today? Don't worry about tomorrow. Just worry about today. Because there'll be another time to pray tomorrow as well. Third key is to come daily for daily bread. Our fourth key is forgiveness both ways. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Loaded again in this one, just like the previous key, there's an assumption that we need forgiveness every day and we need to forgive others every day. Because if we're to pray every day and the assumption is we are to pray every day, then also it would follow that we are to forgive people every day and we are to Ask God for forgiveness every day. It's a super simple but powerful uh, truth. And, And Jesus goes on to reflect after this. He says, unless you forgive others, He won't forgive you. And so many times we ask God for things for us, but we're unwilling to do for others. 
It's this double standard that we hold in our lives. And this prayer, this simple line, lead us, not, uh, not lead us, and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors shows that there's this beautiful transaction that forgiveness must flow both ways. We ask for forgiveness from God and as He forgives us, that shapes how we should forgive others. Now because of how God forgives us, us people who are sinners, who are fallen, who who are in need of His forgiveness every single day, there's people in our world, maybe it's in the car ride on the ride home, maybe it's your, your children, maybe it's someone who's wronged you. There is forgiveness that needs to be extended, but that is only in the context when we understand that forgiveness goes both ways. So many of our prayers are focused on God forgiving us when we hold this grudge, this thing in the shadows behind us. We expect God to forgive us when we're not willing to forgive those who have wronged us. Forgiveness must flow both ways to us and to others, to us and to others. And our final key, if the band can come up as well, is God protects and delivers. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's a prayer of protection. You know, one of my fondest memories, and and some of you may have heard me share this before, is that I remember clearly growing up, going to bed early on in life, me and a couple of my brothers shared rooms together, but then over time, we just sort of got our own room, which was awesome. But I remember every night, my mum coming in and praying a prayer of protection. And I got it. And if you come and look at this tattoo here, it's an angel holding like a banner, like a, like a sign. And it says, angels watch over me, keep me safe. And that was the prayer that my mum prayed over me every single night. Angels watch over my boys, keep them safe. And I love that because it places the protecting and the, and the deliverance and, the, and, and it's not dismissing the brokenness in the world. It's not dismissing the very real enemy that's out there, but it also places it in God's hands and saying that it's Him that delivers. It's Him that protects. Can I ask you, when was the last time you prayed for your kids? Like I know I'm not at that stage as a parent yet, but I've been told as you kid kids become teenagers and they go out to watch a movie or they go out with their friends late at night. You're just sort of sitting at home waiting for them, hoping that they're okay. You know, just just send a text, let me know where you are. That's my dad there. (laughs) I think I've said it before, he's my biggest heckler. You're just sitting there at home like, just send me a text, let me know you're breathing, let me know you're safe, let me know you're okay. How about instead of worrying, just say, hey God, protect my kid, protect my child. Maybe that family that are going through a really rough time that you know. Maybe that friend or that person who's in a significant struggle or wrestle right now. How about you just pray protection over them? Say, God, why don't you just protect them? Because you know, the awesome thing about being a disciple of Jesus, Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And what does He do with that? He gives that authority and He outworks His power and His purpose and His plan through His disciples. So when we pray, when we pray protection, when we pray against the works of the enemy, you know what? The enemy must listen and they must flee. And sometimes we forget this simple truth that God outworks His power, not separate from us, but through us. And so I love every part of this prayer because it helps us realign our posture, helps us realign our heart, it helps us realign our thoughts and Oftentimes, these things that just get so loaded up. So maybe what is it for you? Maybe God wants you to recognise you as His Father, Holy Father. You know, that word holy just means consistent. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He's consistently good. He's consistently faithful. He is consistently a good father. 
and He loves you very much. He is your Father in heaven. Maybe you need to do some work in placing God's will greater than yours. Maybe you need to start praying prayers, not about our wants or my wants or my desires and start shaping our prayers to a world who desperately need Jesus. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Maybe maybe you just need to start praying daily. Don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just pray today. Pray today, daily. Maybe you need to, one, ask God for forgiveness, but don't ask God for forgiveness if you're not willing to forgive those who are around you. Maybe there's someone you need to forgive and maybe you need to ask God in prayer if you can do that. Lord, help me forgive that person. There's still bitterness in my heart. There's still pain in my heart. I need to forgive that person because I wanna be reconciled to you. And finally, you need to realise that God protects and He delivers. Maybe there's a situation going on in your world with your kids, with your family. Maybe we just need to pray protection. Know that, you know, when we pray for protection, we place the burden, the thing that we've been carrying and we place it into God's hand. Place it into God's hands. And so can we stand? We're gonna worship together. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray the Lord's Prayer. And I love to just sing that bridge, hallelujah. And I just love it as a congregation, if we would place Jesus, God, our Father in heaven, in His rightful place on the throne and just sing hallelujah. And so let's pray. And if you wanna pray the Lord's Prayer with me right now, we can get it up on the screens as well. I'd love it if we'd all pray this prayer together as a community. So here we go. One, two, three. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be Your Name. Your Kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Come on, let's worship together.
someone praying for someone starting chemo um, who's only 21, someone looking to find a new home, a little baby born premature and currently on life support. The parents aren't Christians but have uh, given permission for the church to pray. What a privileged church that we get to pray for this family. Someone praying for their friend to return to church. People praying with um, issues with rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, anxiety, depression, colds, sicknesses. Uh, someone's been given, uh, a dad that's only been given months to live. And a, a family, um, a family whose nine year old is in hospital and is struggling to breathe. So, some really heavy and big things here and no doubt more in the room. So let's bring these prayer requests. Don't wait for me to pray. Just start praying, start interceding now. Father, we just bring this, this long list of needs to you. God, these, these burdens that people are, are carrying around and we just ask, Lord, would you intercede? Would you have your way? Would you bring your kingdom to earth? Would you restore kingdom order? In these circumstances, would you restore kingdom order and relationships in, in bodies, old and, and young? Lord, would you bring miraculous solutions and um, miraculous provision where it's needed at the moment, God? Would you help us to have faith that, we would, that our, we would bring our faith as small as a mustard seed, Lord? and that you would do the rest. Jesus, we trust you. We believe that you are good, that you are able. We submit ourselves to you again, humbly asking, Lord, would you have your way in each of these circumstances? Lord, would there be such great testimonies that would break out as a result of these answered prayers, Lord? And we look forward to your answers, Lord, and we look forward to your miraculous provision now in Jesus' name, amen. I've got a couple of praise reports that I also want to share with you. Someone saying that their mum has had surgery, a mastectomy, and it went well. They got the results back and they've had a full response to the treatment. No bad cells have been found and she's on her way to remission now. Isn't that awesome? And we've also got someone praising the Lord for the victory and healing we see in our daughter today, who is enjoying health and life after a season of struggle with social anxiety and an eating disorder, all made right again by the power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Amen. Uh, just before I release you into your day to pick up your kids and to have a coffee in the foyer, we just wanted to let you know that uh, as Matt um, announced last week that Dirk Wind had died, uh, his funeral is on this Thursday if, um, if you're interested in attending and if you knew Dirk and the family. So if you would like to know further information about that, you can come out to the information desk after the service. So go well, have a great afternoon, enjoy the sunshine as it tries to break through on this chilly Melbourne morning and um, yeah, bless you as you go.